hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. So, uh, <laughs> here we are on site again. So they're putting the roof on plot nine. So, um, obviously you can see the crane. Uh, so we sh should we head up there? Yep. Sweet. Obviously as we're walking past, you can see uh, this is one of the three basements that they've just prepped. They've got to dig a hole um, for where the sump pumps are going. So you can see those uh, sort of steel cages over there. There's one for, for each and that's basically this sort of concrete well um, where the uh, sump pumps go. So that if any water did get in to the basement, um, it travels around this perimeter drain under the floor and then goes into uh, the sump. Um, and then it just gets pumped out. Um, <clears throat> these basements are very complex from, from obviously the way they used to do them. You've got uh, sort of waterproofing elements on the outside, then the concrete walls, and then internally you've got other waterproof materials that feed into this perimeter drain and the sump, and it's all part of the uh, waterproofing system which is very expensive. What plot is this? <clears throat> this is plot three. Um, so you can, they haven't done four yet, and then five, um, they have done, so five looks just like this. Um, they've, they've also sort of taken the levels, uh, reduced the levels to what we need, because um, obviously this is only half a basement, so the rest of the plot is just on a slab on grade. Um, yeah. so. Carry on. Just getting the roof on plot two. And they're doing the dry stone wall. But I think they're doing a nice job. Because obviously with this being a more traditional barn conversion, we didn't want the concrete exposed, um, which is the retaining wall. So we basically in the end decided this was probably the most cost effective what we have doing it and uh, was most appropriate for a barn conversion. And I think it looks pretty nice. So, so they've got, they're sort of probably about halfway done. And then we'll put a, a little capping stone on top that'll go across both the concrete and the, uh, the dry stone just to keep water from, from penetrating. And then we've got uh, some Siberian larch on the back side of this, which will just sort of make it a little bit more private, but not completely closed off. So I don't know if we can see around. Well, there is, so in, in this unit, we've got to insulate above and between the rafters. Um, so I think there's 70 mil above and 70 mil in between the rafters. So the roofers put the first element on. And you can see, they've like got the first couple of helixes in there uh, and they've insulated, they've got the roofing felt on and the battens to take the slates. We'll probably will point uh, the top three courses um, so that they can get the gutters installed as well. Is that good enough for you? It's <laughs> good enough for me, yeah. Um, I think we're, we're pouring the garage and the rest of the floors in plot eight. This crane driver is one of the best. Um, just a one-man band, Richard Swires. Everybody that's used him loves him and they're cracking on because um, none of the purlins were in. I mean, it turns to 10 o'clock. So in two hours, they've got a lot of big purlins in. Actually, yeah, that may be the last purling to go in, in which case they're, they're uh, gonna start putting the panels on, which would be interesting to see. I wasn't here last time they put them on. So this is the last stage of the sips on this house? Pretty much. Well, um, the last sort of structural stage, and then they've got to put this membrane now, most of these mem a lot of these membranes that they use, they they use them because there's another layer outside layer. There's another wall that goes on the outside of the sips. So, so it's really it's not exposed to the elements um, once that ex exterior wall gets installed. Um, so it can be stone or brick veneer or whatever. But in our case, because we're using Siberian large, and it's um, we've got gaps in it. It's open. It's meant to be an open facade. Um, we need it to be much more robust. And it has to be black with very little writing, if any, and I don't think I can see much um, because 
you will there are little gaps obviously where you will see it so it just needs to look dark black um, so yeah Very similar to this unit, um, roughly the same size, but um, the, the internal layout is a bit different. There was a couple of things that we picked up on the, on this plot uh, that we passed on to the contractor, uh, the, the installation contractor on this, and I can see they've already introduced those. Um, so just making sure how we kind of install this membrane in particular, how it gets taped, how it gets folded into the reveals. Um, and just, just then um, spending a little bit more time making sure uh, that it's right um, will make it easier for us and our, and our the next elements that we do, um, which is the cladding and that kind of stuff. So, um, so I'm, I'm glad they've already picked up on that. Actually, you can see something that we we changed. Um, we added something to this one but we could only add two of these windows that look down into this vaulted living, dining, kitchen space um, because it was an afterthought and there's a lot of structural elements in the way. But on plot nine, obviously we, we knew about that and we, and we changed that um, so that we could install or basically put in three windows, which I think looks a bit better. So if you have a look in there, you'll see um, at first floor level. Yeah, so, and, and the steel, worked a bit better in here and I can already tell from just how close um, everything is lined up um, in terms of the SIPS panels to the steels and um, it looks really really tidy. Um, it, it worked on the last one but it was a little bit harder. Um, we, we had to address a couple of things that didn't quite work out um, the way we hoped they would and, and it, in the end it does and the, the buyer doesn't notice the difference. Um, but it's made it easier for us uh, on this occasion just to work on that. So that's by already by the second plot, we've already worked out a lot of the snags. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm pleased with it. So how's it all going then out of 10? At the moment? Um, out of 10, I'd take one mark off for, uh, one point off for um, the fact that it's going slower than we would like. I would probably take another point off for the fact that uh, part of going as slow as we are as because uh, uh, bank financing is very tricky um, just because the banks have lent uh, a ridiculous amount of money to all the businesses in England um, by the government loan scheme so they're just slow and somewhat reluctant to to uh, lend to developers at the moment but what it meant for us is basically we're just using a lot more private finance but um, by that I mean ourselves we're having to put our own cash in um so i guess yeah eight out of ten um uh, shouldn't bad so what's going on in number seven then is there any developments interiors um, that we yeah well let's let's go have a look oh yeah so they've got first ready with the first uh first roof panel Well, this is something we had to change in one of the uh, sit constructions, um, which is basically uh, where the manifolds are going for the underfloor heating. We didn't really want to box, have sort of things boxed out uh, from the wall. There's, there's a bathroom on the other side, so there was another false wall on the other side, which would hide all of the pipe work and everything. There was space to where we could effectively recess the manifold uh, into the bathroom, but it's obviously just in the false wall. Uh, and that's so that's what they've created here. But because it um, was in this structural element of the SIPs, 
we actually had to go back to them and say, right, what can we do and what do we need it to make it look like? So that's why they added some extra vertical legs and then this header um, just to make sure the weight is uh, distributed properly. Um, but um, the SIPS designers are really good about doing that, um, finding little solutions for us so that we can um, make little changes to the structure without uh, messing with the integrity. Still not sure what we're doing as far as staircase in there, but this staircase we have, well, part, partly again because we've got, a, um, we're going to hide one of the manifolds underneath here. It'll create a bit of storage as well. We've made a fairly simple staircase, which will either get tiled, the stairs will either get tiled or carpeted. They'll, there will be a, ball, a, a solid balustrade here as well. Um, we could have put a timber uh, staircase in here, but um, I like the, I like it when it's really solid. I hate squeaky staircases. And I mean, you should be able to do a timber staircase and not have it squeak, but there's no chance of this squeaking. But that again is another rainy day job for them to carry on with that, which is probably Wednesday. And that, you can oh, see that's a special bracket um, that you, you wouldn't normally be able to do that on this joist. You'd have to be, I don't know, 600 away from the end. But we had something that we needed to do. And I'm not sure why there's one. Oh no, I know why there's one there. It's because that was how they were able to feed. They needed to feed the pipe through. So. The hole is not for anything anymore, but if you can imagine, you've got a bunch of joists. Oh, we'll go in here, I'll show you. You've got this pipe, which is picking up a bathroom on this side, but we needed to tie it in with this one waste point, which is on the floor already. And they've got this, you've got this long section of pipe, if you can imagine. If you, There's no way to put that in unless you could slide it from the outside where it's open. But that, that again was a solution that SIPS came up with. Yeah, so that worked out really well. In fact, you know, again, this wasn't really on the plan. Uh, we just had to come up with a solution. Um, and we talked about a couple of different things, um, some of which might have meant, you know, creating an additional boxing in. In a lot of houses, you might, <laughs> this might have been out here, and then they would just put a box around it. And everybody knows what that is. That's, you know, to me, to me, that sort of thing is unfortunate because it just feels like it, you didn't plan ahead um, to try and hide that. And in, in some traditional buildings, obviously you can't because they're block, so you, you have no choice. That's the great thing about timber is that you've got a lot of options um, for hiding pipes and cables and all sorts. Well, that's just all of the Velux, Velux windows that we can't yet put in until we get the roof sorted. Which is unfortunate, um, and that's probably um, the, the elements on plot seven that we ha obviously that will be the first time of doing them is the cladding, the roof, and the Velexes. And these are going to be kind of tricky because there are three. There's a vertical uh, Velux window and then two on the roof, but one obviously is installed in the SIP air, in the SIP wall, and the other two is in the SIP roof. And it's how um, the flashing detail for, um, in conjunction with the Katnik roof. That's the thing that, you know, until we do it, basically Katnick and Velux have been discussing it between themselves about what's the best way to do it. They're going to do a combination of a flashing that they've just come out with from Velux and um, actually making some of the flashing out of the roofing material. So a combination of the two. Um, so again, that's going to be a tricky element that has, we have to get right from an aesthetic point of view, but more importantly from a, um, a uh, weatherproofing point of view. I suppose something I've, I've um, picked up on today, but it's probably true of pretty much any um, construction method, is it's really You've got to have a good manufacturer, a good supplier, and you have to have a really good installer. If you don't have both of those things, you can run into problems and requires a level of, um, well, co cooperation between uh, both parties rather than, and you can't get this where um, 
they're working against each other. They're always blaming each other because something's not, you know, working right. Uh, you know, it's the installer's fault. No, it's the supplier's fault. You know, it's the manufacturer's fault. Um, but these, these guys have worked for a long time uh, for SIPs. So they're, they're subcontractors to Clay's. So obviously they, they know what they're doing. But even just like today, you know, they found something that was causing a bit of problem, partly because it is so accurate that when something is, is not cut as accurate as something else, they have, to, they have to try and figure out how to make that work. And the roof is probably the hardest bit of that because they've got to line the ridge through precisely because everything sort of you know, fits perfectly together um, at the pinnacle of the ridge. But it's because it's one piece, obviously it also has to line up perfectly at the eave. So down here at the eave, it, you know, if it's slightly over the eave, it's actually protruding um, beyond the um, wall panel. And that causes those problems in terms of the insulation of the, the gutters. And basically, you know, we only have, you know, 100 mil um, to put the cladding and the substructure for the cladding. So if you can imagine, if that gets pushed out, that pushes everything else out. So it has to be super accurate. So if they find out that, you know, one of the panels is five mil uh, smaller, which, you know, the, the tolerances for cutting this kind of stuff, they're small anyway. So it's not, it's, not, it's not a problem with the manufacturer or the panels or anything like that. It's just one of those things they have to work with. So they'll just end up having to trim a little bit off. You know, we're talking about five mil but even five mil affects what we're doing later on. So yeah, that's why I would say, not only do you want to make sure that the, the supplier is good, but obviously it's still only as good as the installer. Very good, what's coming up next then? Uh, well, next hopefully, as I mentioned before, I think is uh, we need to get the roof on this. We want to get it cladded, get the Veluxes in. Um, then we can drop the scaffolding and we can start to work on the, the rest of the groundworks and basically we're just inside and I think it gives our buyers then a very good uh, idea of what their properties what their own units are going to look like um, which I think everybody's anxious to see how that's how that's going to turn out but um, we're good so that's next time bye <laughs>if you have a look in there you'll see um at first floor level or have you already seen it i'll get it i'll get all the cutaways afterwards oh right right okay. just focus on getting your voice oh right sorry <laughs> all right. i've ruined it now